Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at getting started with RAD Schedule View, part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to take a look at creating a brand new RAD Schedule View in our project. After that, we're going to go ahead and add some view definitions, and finally we're going to set an appointment source so we can actually view appointments in our RAD Schedule View. Moving over into Visual Studio, we're going to go to the Telerik Visual Studio Extensions menu, select RAD controls for Silverlight, and create a new Telerik project. From the install templates, we want to select Telerik and make sure Silverlight is selected. We want to do a C-sharp application, and we'll call this RAD Schedule View dot getting started. Click OK. We have a familiar Silverlight Projects settings window. We'll say Silverlight 4. We want the ASP.NET web project. We're OK with the web project name. Click OK. Next up, you're going to see the Telerik Project Configuration Wizard. This will allow you to easily include the correct assemblies for what you want to put into your project, as well as select what themes you might want to include. Today, we know we're working with Schedule View, so we're going to scroll down, select Schedule View, and you can see the other dependent assemblies have already been selected for us, taking out all the guesswork of what we need to include in our project. Click Finish, and Visual Studio will do the rest to get our new project started up. Now we can see our new projects all started up, and we can also see that those Telerik assemblies that were referenced in the project configuration wizard are now included in our references. That's controls, input, navigation, and schedule view. Moving over to the design surface, we could go ahead and go into our toolbox and drag and drop a RAD schedule view to our design surface, but I want to build one up by stepping through the XAML just so you can see the different elements we have to include to get RAD schedule view up and running. So instead of the toolbox, I will go down into my XAML, and we're going to go ahead, and since the Telerik namespace is already included, say Telerik Rad Schedule View, give it a name, X Rad Schedule View, and close up our brackets. Now, the first thing you're going to notice once you do this is that Schedule View is telling you to provide an appointment source. Now, this is something you can set both through binding and through code behind, but of course, because our developers are very big fans of MVVM, we do recommend using that approach for any larger scale applications. However, for this example, we're just going to do everything in code behind to keep it nice and simple. However, other videos in the series are going to include the MVVM model, so you'll get to see how to do it both ways. But of course, if we just ran our project right now, there wouldn't be much to see here in our schedule view. So the first thing we want to do is add some view definitions. We'll do that by saying Telerik rad schedule view dot view definitions. Now, within the view definitions collection, we can include custom view definition, day, month, timeline, and week. So we're going to go ahead and in order, say day view definition, week definition, and then we want to do a month definition. Keep it nice and simple for what we're working with. Now this means as we're working with a control, we can switch between a single day view, a week view, which will be seven days, and month view, which will show the entire month, all with rich transitions to move between the different views to give us better control over whether we want to view a specific day, week, or month worth of appointments. But of course, like I said, we need to provide an appointment source for RAD Schedule View, so we're going to do a quick save and jump into code so we can add that new appointment source. Within our code, we're going to say list.loaded, go to our loaded event for main page. The next thing we want to do is create a collection to hold appointments, which are the base of what RAD Schedule View is displaying. Now, you may have noticed, if you're familiar with stuff like WPF already, that we're saying appointment source and not item source. That's because Rad Schedule View uses a very custom type of item as the base for everything that we're doing, which is I appointment. Now, I appointment is going to be what we use if we want to create a custom appointment. However, there's also appointment and appointment base. So there's a few different ways that we can come at making custom appointments. But for the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to use the base appointment that comes with Rad Schedule View, which contains all the necessary fields for the default appointment settings as well as templates in the control. To go further, we're going to create a brand new observable collection of appointment. Call it appointments. And we're going to go ahead and add a single appointment to this just for something that will display. So we'll say appointments dot add new appointment. Now appointment is going to have a number of fields that we want to set. First up, subject is what's going to display for the appointment. I'm a new appointment. 
I'm going to go ahead and give it a start time equals new daytime. And for our daytime, we want to be very granular. So we're going to go ahead and say year 2012, month 2, we're in February, day, it's the 7th, hour, we'll say 12, minute 30, and second 0. We also want to set an end time. It was new time, again 2012, 2, wrong item, 2, 7, we'll say this is going to be 14, 30, and 0. Now as you can see, we have an appointment with a subject, a start, and an end time, which is effectively all you really need to get an appointment into Rad Schedule View and displaying. Last thing we really need to do, go ahead and set the appointment source of our Rad Schedule View to our appointments collection. So what we've done here, just to recap, we create a new observable collection of appointments, which is the base default appointment item that you can use for Rad Schedule View to use all the functionality you see in the templates. We go ahead and add a new appointment to that, setting the subject, start, and end time, and we set the appointment source of Rad Schedule View to that collection. So when we go ahead and run this, we're going to see Rad Schedule View pop up with a single appointment, and this should be going from 12:30 to 2:30. Sorry, we use military time, but to 2:30. Go ahead and run this. Wait for Internet Explorer. Now that Internet Explorer is all loaded up, we're going to go ahead and scroll down and see we have our I'm a new appointment. It's going from 12:30 to 2:30. If I go into the appointment itself, we see the subject is defined, the start and end times are defined, and we also have a slew of other options. So if we want to add recurrence, we want to set time markers, set this one to busy, we can categorize this, give it a new color, set the importance, even say if it's an all day event, click OK, and we can instantly see this reflected in the control. But even better, for what little work we've done to just bind a collection to this control, we're going to go ahead and make a brand new appointment. So, brand new appointment. Description, we'll give it something descriptive. And we want to say this time marker is going to be free and this category will be green with low importance. Go ahead and click OK. And now we have I'm a new appointment. We can see the high importance marker. If we go to this one, we see the low importance marker with that subject. We see all the values that we entered and really it was just that easy to get going with this brand new control. And if you remember, I mentioned the view definitions. We can switch from day to week, scrolling down, see our appointments, to month, where we can still see our appointments. And of course, you can go ahead and move these appointments to different days, go ahead and delete appointments directly from the UI with confirmation. I hope you've seen just how easy it is to get started with the RAD Schedule View for Silverlight and WPF. Stay tuned for more videos in this series where we go over creating a custom appointment going through resources, resource grouping, as well as how to add a custom filter for displaying appointments in RAD Schedule View. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.